Millions were liquidated today as Bitcoin got a move to the downside of about 7%. And the question on everybody's mind right now is, is this the time to sell? Was this whole pump a trap? Are we going to be getting a significant pullback? We're going to be digging into these charts and I will be telling you exactly what we need to look for. So make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel and click the bell because we are bringing you the most timely Bitcoin updates. Now, first of all, we absolutely did see millions of traders get liquidated during this massive move to the downside right here. You can see in this one candle, we saw 43 million long trades get liquidated. And then just a few candles later over here, we saw another 22 million long get absolutely wrecked and of course guys as you saw I currently am in a short trade and the reason why I took a short from this level is because it was a key zone of resistance that we were looking at over in the VIP discord we did in fact give this trade setup to take along from around that twenty three point nine thousand dollar area and as you can see on the chart right here we actually came up right into the short zone number two over in the Casper Crew VIP Discord. And if you want to join the community where we give the levels every single day and the trade setups, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Jason Casper. Also, guys, if you do want to take advantage of this volatility by trading on Bybit with 0% limit fees, you can click the link in the description of the video. Of course, only sign up to Bybit if you know what you're doing. If you've never traded before and you try to trade on Bybit, you'll stub your toe in the middle of the night, scream really loud, wake up your wife, which will wake up your baby. Your wife will be pissed at you. Your baby will be pissed at you. You'll drop your phone in the toilet. You won't be able to call your boss to tell her you won't come to work. So she'll fire you. Then you'll get a flat tire. Your whole life will fall apart, guys. Totally not worth it, okay? But if you are a good trader and you know what you're doing, then you can take advantage of the 0% limit fee. So let's talk about right now, what is happening with this Bitcoin price? Are we going to be getting a significant pullback from here? Because if we take a look at the chart, we can see that this is actually the biggest pullback we have gotten since the low that we put in at about $16,300. We're also in the Casper Crew VIP Discord. We were taking the long. And full disclosure, guys, I am still holding that long trade right now. I have not closed it yet. You can see I had a TP at 24K. I had another TP at 29K. Still holding the trade. I'm also in another long position over on Bybit as well. So I have not closed out my swing long positions yet. Okay, I still do think that there is room for the upside. And I'm going to be talking exactly why I think that. So when we look at this chart, we can see a few things that are very, very interesting. First of all, we are coming up to a key area of resistance, which is between that twenty-four dollars and $25,000 zone. So if we are going to get a pullback, this is definitely the area where we would need to look for one right? This is absolutely an area where you need to look for them because when it comes to trading, what do we want to do? We want to buy low and sell high. The advice that your grandfather gave you when you told him you were getting into trading, right? You told him, hey, grandpa, I think I'm getting into trading. And you thought he was going to shoot you down because, you know, you were a high school dropout. You lived in your mom's garage. You tried to be a musician that didn't work out. And you were very nervous to tell him that you were going to get into trading. But when you told him, he looked at you with that grandpa smile and he said, son, let me tell you a thing or two. Let me learn you a thing or two about investing, son. Investing so dang easy, all you got to do is buy low and sell high. Well, objectively speaking, guys, we are coming up to the highs that we put in from August, right? And also, objectively speaking, back here at 16.3, we were at a low, which is why we took the long trade. So this is the area where we would look for a pullback. Now, what would make me close my swing longs? There are a few very specific areas that I think we need to be aware of. Now, the first major area is going to be this. We need to go down to a lower term time frame and kind of see what is happening very locally here. When we take a look at this local kind of price action, we can see that we're divided up into two sideways ranges on the chart here. One was trading between the dates of Saturday, January 14th and uh, Thursday, January 19th. And the second one, I would say, was trading from uh, Saturday, January 21st to our present day. When we take a look at this top range right here, there are two major zones that I want you to be aware of. First of all, as long as we don't lose this range to the downside, guys, I am still not going to be closing my long trades because there's no reason for me to get ultra, ultra bearish when we are coming down to what is clearly support. Remember, our grandfather told us to buy low and sell high. So on a local time frame for the past week and a half, this level that price has currently come down to right now has been support. It's been support once, twice, three, four, and now the fifth time. So I'm not going to get overly bearish here if we're not going to be losing this range. There's a very good chance we could continue to range here, maybe even putting a higher high leading up into the FOMC rate decision on Wednesday. It's going to be a very, very interesting week. 
Now, the second area that we really need to be aware of is going to be this range down here. Okay, this range is coming in between, I would say, the price of 20200 to 20700 As long as we don't lose this important zone of support, I'm actually going to be holding my swing longs open. And the reason for that is because I think that it's perfectly acceptable for us to form a local range up here with a clearly defined high at around 24K and a clearly defined low at around 20,600 without getting overly, overly bearish. When we look at the higher time frames, things are actually still looking kind of bullish, right? We can take a look at the monthly time frame and see Marcus Cypher B is still printing the green dot. We can take a look at the weekly time frame and see that there is still more room for upside here. Although the VWAP is starting to kind of curve over toward that zero line, we know historically that even when that VWAP starts to curve toward the zero line, as it was doing over here, we still got a lot more upside. Even on the daily time frame, when we take a look at Marcus Cypher B, we can see that there is still potentially room for one more push up just to stop out all the early shorters before getting our real pullback so for right now i am basically as long as we're staying above this chunk of price action right i would say basically testing these previous highs from november before the ftx collapse i will be keeping my long trades open now what if we do get a major pullback here because that is a real possibility if we go to the four hour time frame we can see very very clearly that we have been printing a very very bearish pattern here on market cypher b some of you are familiar with it this is the upside down sam bankman freed man boob pattern where we have the uneven man boobs are getting lower the money flow is getting lower the red pepperoni nipples are getting lower as the price is getting higher historically this is a very bearish sign we saw this actually before the ftx collapse so i'm fully aware of the fact that this actually could have been a top and if this was a top let's talk about what we need to look for if we want to catch a higher low because i still maintain that this is bullish market structure having changed market structure on the weekly time frame here's what we need to be aware of First of all, if this is a significant high and we are not going to come in and make a higher high, as traders, we need to be aware that if we want to get with the direction of the market, we need, now need to find a short entry. How are we going to find a short entry? For me, it's really all about now shorting a lower high. So if this was a real top, what I like to do is I like to pull the Fibonacci golden pocket from the high to the low, and we can even analyze all the volume that traded here. And we can see that we do have some really nice confluences around the value area high slash golden pocket of the range coming in around $23,000 to $23.4,000. If this was a significant high, we would look for a lower high right here. Now, keep in mind that I would not consider this officially, I would not consider this as the high unless we officially change market structure right here and put in a new low, taking out these lows and closing the candle below. OK, so it would be very speculative to try and short a lower high right here, considering the fact that we have not yet taken out the low. If we had come down and taken out the low and then start to get our retracement, I would be much, much more bearish looking to short this lower high. But because we actually have put in a higher high right here, as we can see so far, I'm not as quick to say that the top is in just yet. OK, so we should be if if this is a top looking to potentially short this down and confirmation for me will be putting in a lower high, then getting a retracement looking to short a low, uh, uh, yeah, putting in a lower low and then looking to short a lower high. Now, if we do continue to the downside, and again, I will be looking for support around here. And if we don't find that we need to go to a higher term time frame to determine what is likely to happen as we get this move to the downside. So for me, it's actually very, very clear. Having put in now a bullish market structure, having on the weekly time frame put in a low, a high, a higher low, and now a higher high, taking out th this weekly high and this weekly high, I would now look to long a higher low. And there's a very, very juicy zone of confluence right down here at around $19,100. $19,100 is a major support resistance flip where we can see all the way back to June, this was support once, twice, three times, four, five, six, seven times. Then this zone was also resistance in December. And so now we would expect that if we make our way back down to this major zone of resistance now flipping to support, that we'd be able to catch a higher low right here to actually enter into a swing long trade, potentially, to the $30,000 level. So this is how we need to approach this price action. But before we get overexcited, there's a few things we need to keep in mind. Number one, the S&P 500. The S&P 500, as you can see, is breaking out of this major, major trend line right here, this yellow trend line. And the reason why this is so important is because if the S&P 500 can hold this key support 
at around 3980, where we have the golden pocket Fibonacci retracement, the high volume node, and the trend line. I still think that we can continue up in this uptrend for Bitcoin. If the S&P 500 does something like this during the week, I would fully expect that Bitcoin will just come down to retest this $21,000 area before putting in another high. However, if the S&P 500 loses this trend line, we now become very, very bearish. And the reason for that, guys, is because if we lose the trend line, look at this trend line. This is a year-long trend line going all the way back to January 2022. And the target, if we actually now lose this trend line, is coming all the way back down to the $37,000 level. So it could be very, very bearish. Now, there's one more thing that we need to keep in mind as we move into the week. On Wednesday, the Federal Reserve will be announcing the rate hike. We're already basically banking on the fact that it's going to be a 25 basis point rate hike, which is a quarter of a percent. The last time that happened, guys, it was a buy the rumor, sell the news kind of deal. Okay, a buy the rumor, sell the news kind of deal where we can go back. Basically, it happened on this exact day, uh, December 14th on the Wednesday, where people were getting bullish because they knew the Fed was going to announce 25 basis points. Everybody was longing and then boom, we came up to an area of resistance and got a rejection. So imagine if we do the same thing now, right? Even if we come down, we get our bounce on Tuesday, we rally tomorrow, we rally Wednesday, everybody's getting bullish, the Fed announces 25 basis points, boom. Then we get our real pullback. That is actually the scenario that I prefer. I would like to hit some take profits around that 25K zone, but it's not guaranteed. Guys, if you want to learn how to trade this way, you can check out the courses, jasoncaspertrading.com. We have two courses. One is a basic trading course to basically put you on a path and give you a system to be profitable. The second one is a more advanced course dealing with order flow, a chart like this. Currently, 20% discount on both courses in the description of the video right now. That is it for today's video, guys. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to click the bell for notifications. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Jason underscore Casper. Um... God bless everybody in the name of Jesus, the Messiah. I pray everybody is very blessed. Everybody watching, everybody listening. May you be blessed in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. And I will see everybody in the next video. Peace.